You said uh, you didn't think anything else could horrify you about what the U.S. is doing right no. now. You've been at COP for many years. This is the first U.N. climate summit uh, in which the U.S., well, the new president, Donald Trump, uh, has said he's pulling the U.S. out of the U.N. climate summit. Your response to this, the significance of this, and what it means for Africa? You know, when the announcement came, um, my first reaction was, well, the U.S. has never really been a, a positive force in the Conference of Parties on Climate Change. The U.S. has gone consistently right from Kyoto in 1997, been they introduced market forces in 2009 in Copenhagen. The U.S. brought the Cop Cop Copenhagen Accord, driving the, the discussion from having binding regimes to voluntary regime, which is what we ended up having in, the, in Paris and what is being negotiated now. Uh, so when, it, when Trump pulled out, my fear was that he was the pulling off wasn't taking immediate effect, but rather would take a couple of years before it happens. So within that time, the U.S. do more harm more harm than they would have done if they had just left immediately, Trump said, we are leaving. Uh, and so th this is, uh, is, a, is a big problem for the world because it means that the, the problems uh, that nations in Africa, in vulnerable uh, small island states are facing from storms, hurricanes and typhoons, they're going to face more and that there's no hope that a rich, polluting nation like the U.S. would do its own fair share to help mitigate these problems. And Nigeria, the largest oil-producing country in Africa, how climate change affects your nation, the most populous nation in Africa? Uh, oh, yes. We have having real serious impacts, and we've been discussing with the government on this, and that Nigeria needs to take action, not just depending on what others may help them to do. Uh, for example, the northern not part of Nigeria is highly impacted by increasing desertification. Nigeria is close to the Sahara Desert. But we're having 11 states in northern Nigeria being impacted by desertification. In the south, we're having sea level rise com combined with, combined with uh, heavy pollution from the oil industry. And so you're having people being displaced from the south and displaced from the north. When you hear about violence in the north, it's like the Boko Haram violence. A lot of the conflict that we're having between headsmen and farmers is caused by climate impacts. Why do you say religious. climate impacts? Boko Haram people would be very oh, shocked. Well, <laughs> well, the group that's you know, captured hundreds of girls. It, oh, yeah, they did that. They've done horrible things. They're still using little girls as suicide bombers, which is horrible. And, I mean, whatever they've done cannot be def defended. But... What, make, what gives them the army that they're working with? Is it climate impact that is dispossessing the people? People are, Lake Chad was once 25,000 square kilometers. Now it's 1,500 square kilometers. And so a lot of people, the fisher folks, the farmers, the pastoralists are being displaced looking for grazing land because we don't have ranches like they have in the U.S. We have free-range cattle. And so they're moving southwards and having conflict for farmers. Uh, really, the middle part of the country, there's a lot of bloodshed due to, due to this kind of conflict, and uh, clearly traceable to global warming. Well, we want to thank you, Nima Bassi, for joining us today and for being here, I think, uh, probably longer than we have been at all the U.N. climate summits back to Copenhagen. <laughs> um, I'm used to seeing you getting arrested here at some protests. Well, now, today we are free. <laughs> uh -huh. Nima Bassi, Nigerian environmental activist, director of the Health of Mother Earth Foundation, wrote the foreword for the report by Corporate Accountability titled Polluting Paris, How Big Polluters Are Undermining Global Climate Policy. Uh, we're going to talk about that report in just a minute. He's also author of the book To Cook a Continent. Stay with us.